Many of us spend a lot of time and energy trying to find the best, most high performing tooling for our machining operations. But if you're not also considering your work holding, you may be missing out on a critical part of your machining processes. What's up guys, Ian Sandusky from Lakewood Machine and Tool, back here again for Practical Machinist. And today on Shop Talk, we're gonna be going through some of the work holding options that you may not have thought of to make sure you are getting the most out of your machine. But before we do, make sure you like, subscribe, and turn on notifications below to make sure you never miss a video. Let's get into it. Hey guys, so as promised, today we are going to be talking about work holding. This is a bit of a special episode of Shop Talk we have here for you today, and I'm excited to get into this one. As I mentioned at the top of this video, I do think that work holding is something that a lot of us don't pay enough attention to. Um, I know here at Lakewood Machine and Tool, we've spent a lot of time and energy over the years dedicated to trying to track down the highest performing tooling we can find for our machining processes. So, you know, we've had a lot of brands that we've tested out, um, a lot of different offerings from those brands we've tested out, doing tool tests, running, you know, a cutter A versus cutter B, seeing who has the highest material removal rates, who has the longest tool life, you know, everything that goes into who has the best performing tooling. But one thing we really have neglected and not thought a lot about is the work holding. And the reason it's so important is that you can have the highest performing, performing machine in the world. You know, you can have a ton of power at your spindle. You can have the fastest feeds and rapids out there. Combine that with some crazy uh, tool holding, you know, you can have hydraulic holders, shrink fit, all the stuff that goes into that. You can also pair that with the highest performing tooling. But if you don't have a very solid way to be able to hold your workpiece, to make sure it's not gonna shift, to make sure that it's held securely, to uh, dampen all the vibrations in that workpiece, you're gonna miss out on a big part of that process and you're not gonna be able to harness all those other things we just talked about. You're not gonna be able to run them to their utmost, you know, top of the line performance. And today, if you look behind me here, you'll see something a little different on my mill. That's right, Jurgens has been kind enough to hook us up here at Lakewood with a couple options to let us take a look at to see some things we may not have thought about. Uh, when it comes to work holding here at Lakewood, you know, yeah, we have some newer vices, we have some newer fixtures that we built, but a lot of what we have here in our machines, I'm sad to say, have really been whatever we've had here for years. Um, you know, we have vices and stuff that I don't even know what they are anymore because these stickers have worn off them and can they hold apart? Yeah, but are they top of the line? Are they, you know, precision engineered? Who knows and probably not. So this is a bit of an exciting one to get a chance to look at some of the things you may not know about. I didn't know about some of this stuff, so hopefully this is interesting for you guys. So we're gonna go into my BF4SS here and take a look at some of the things we have. So the first thing I'd like to draw your attention to here from Jurgens is this subplate. This is actually steel. When we first brought it in, I thought this was aluminum because a lot of the subplates I've seen out there tend to be aluminum. You know, a lot of the guys selling these, they tend to be aluminum, you know, with a one by one grid of tap holes that you can go in and you know easily put toggle clamps on or whatever but this is actually precision ground steel it is very heavy and heavy is good because heavy means it's stable it's strong it's not going to move on you the other thing i don't know if you can see back here is this plate is actually engineered specifically for this machine so over here on this end of my table you can see the sub plate actually goes out about uh, I'd say 10 to 12 inches, maybe not a foot, maybe just under, beyond the actual end of my table. The reason this is cool is this is engineered so that when we jog this as far as we can to that side, it's gonna clear. So we're getting more table out of our actual table here, more working area than we had before. The reason this is cool is I know some of you guys have seen our fourth axis we have here. We have a Haas fourth axis. This spot over here, when we get this set up, is going to be able to have our fourth axis on the table all the time. And being able to have that kind of versatility is really, really cool. So this is the subplate, and this is what everything else kind of mounts on. 
The other thing you're gonna see here are these little black liners everywhere. This is for the Jurgens ball lock system. What the ball lock system is, is it's a quick change, very accurate, very repeatable system and that you can move things around on this table anywhere you want, very quickly, very easily. These basically not only have the clamping force with them, but they're locating to within half a thou of repeatability. Those are called the liners. These are 20 millimeter. So you can essentially take vices or fixtures or subplates. You can see this here, this vice here is on a subplate. This vice over here is actually just on the table. But you can take them, move them to wherever you want very, very quickly and easily, and it doesn't take any time to dial them in. Because as long as you've got that, well, I mean the vice, you don't need to dial in at all because it's on the table, it locates off those. On one like this with a subplate, as long as that vice is square on the subplate, you can pull that out, move wherever you want within a half thou repeatability. Meaning you don't need to clock these things in, you don't need to spend time with an indicator running it forward and back, you just throw it on and it's good to go. So the secret to the ball lock system are these right here. These are the ball lock shanks. These are the parts that actually go down through the sub or through the little plate onto the main sub plate. And the way they work is actually pretty ingenious. So you see these ball bearings along the bottom here. You can see those right there. Essentially, underneath this set screw, there's another ball bearing. So when you tighten this down, just with an Allen key, it does not take much. 35 inch pounds of torque is what they're rated at. That ball bearing up top pushes into these ones down here, pushes them out, as you can see like that, and those little ball bearings lock into the liners, and there's a little groove in there, so it pulls it down. So it's an extremely strong clamping force that's also repeatable and also very, very quick to use. This is kind of the secret sauce of those. Behind me here, you can see the other thing we got, we got this double vise. This is a double vise with aluminum soft jaws. So these top jaws here, we have a part set up in here so I don't want to take it apart. But this, these are soft jaws so you can machine them, you can swap them around, you can get new ones so you know you can have different um, jaws for different jobs that are just ready to go whenever you need them. And the other cool thing is that this is basically shaped like a jigsaw puzzle. It's got three points of contact. Now what's cool about that is that allows you to go and nest these very, very closely together. You can see that cut out there and the cutout on the other side. So if I wanted on this table, I could have five, six, seven, eight of these in a row that I could drop on, pull off, do whatever we need. So it's very, very good for high production. Um, we were running another job in here recently that went really, really well. We were using both sides of this vise. Clamping force was on point. We were taking some very, very heavy cuts with a three quarter inch cutter and we had no problem with shifting, lifting, no problem at all. Very comparable, even though those are aluminum jaws, to a steel jaw setup. We had no problem at all, worked very, very well. We got 50 parts done just as fast, if not faster than we would have in any other kind of scenario. The next one we have here, apologize for the little bit of coolant on there, but this is the heavy duty milling vise. So this is what you consider to be a typical mill vise. It's a little smaller, doesn't have quite as much range on it, but this is for doing really, really heavy mill work. These are available in a few different sizes and you can see that's on a subplate, or I guess a secondary subplate. So that can pop off and if we had this kind of plate on our other machines, I could take it from this machine, pull those out, run and put it in another machine and it would be ready to go pretty much like that. So we're really excited to use that one there. The next one we have here, which we have not had a chance to give a shot yet, this is a self-centering vise. A lot of you guys may recognize this kind of vise if you do five axis work. These are very, very typical for that kind of work. But what's cool about these is you can see on the top here, these little, I would call them, you know, gripper jaws, but these can be moved anywhere you want in that channel. They can be switched around so I can use the other side. So if I want more land underneath the part, um, you can see there's a little step there. So it's almost like built in parallels. It's very, very handy when you tighten this down, these move together into the center. Very, very quick, very strong clamping force. And this actually has, you can see these holes here. There are um, quick change bolts that we have that came with this that not only locate this into position, 
But what we can do is we can use these, pop them out. So we put this on the table, we mill our first operation, we pop those out quick change, you know, three, four seconds, and that can actually go on to our fourth axis afterwards to be able to do all the other operations. So essentially for a shop like us where we don't have five axis capability here, we can essentially cheese four plus one axis, so it's five axis kind of, with just this little vise and our fourth axis. So we're really excited to give this one a shot. Um, the next time we look at this, I'm really hoping to have this one set up and a job running. There's a lot of jobs that we've had where we have to put four or five vices on that table. So I'm excited to be able to use this to maybe change that into two operations as opposed to five. Really, really excited to give this one a shot. So we've been running this setup here from Jurgens for about a week and a half now. This is our second job going in here right now. You can see we have two different operations. Um, could we do it in one vice? Probably we could do them both in that vice over there. But we're just trying to move things around, trying to use them to see what we like, um, try to evaluate you know, what's gonna be the best way for us to use them. So far, we've been really, really impressed with this system. The versatility to be able to move things around, um, you know, not spend a lot of time setting up has been good so far. We're really interested to give this a shot to see just how much time it can save with our setups. With things like this, you really have to change your thinking. You know, as a shop where we've traditionally just had vices mounted straight on the table in the T slots, to change over to a system like this is going to take a little bit of thinking. Um, you know, if we're used to doing something one way, the changeover and the buy in from the guys is going to take a minute. But we're already seeing that they like it. It's quick, it's easy. We haven't really found any downside yet. It's going to be interesting to see how the versatility is because as a job shop, you know, we're switching over jobs all the time. Are we going to be able to save time? So far, it looks like yes, but we're going to be evaluating this over the coming months to see just kind of what kind of production we get out of it, um, see if there's any kind of additions we can put on this. The one really nice thing about the Jurgen system is it's completely modular. So while this is what we have in here for it right now, we can actually go and bring in all these other different things. You know, we can have rails that we put on top of this to be able to move fixture vices along them so we can do big or awkwardly shaped stuff. Um, we can put 10 of these vices on here if we want. We could have a fourth axis and that little five axis vice. Really getting to see what we can do with this and what we may want to put on here is exciting. So I'm very interested to see where we get here. I'd like to know in the comments below, guys, have you guys ever used a subplate system like this with a quick change um, you know, locking system like this? What are some things you like about them? What are some things that someone getting into this should know? I'd love to know in the comments below, you know, has your shop switched over to using this entirely? Or did you try to bring it in, didn't like it, and all of a sudden you had to kind of go back? Either way, I'd love to know your experiences below so you can give me a hand getting the most out of this system. Thank you very much to Jurgens. You're gonna be seeing more of this coming up. And make sure, as always, that you like, subscribe, and turn on notifications below to make sure you never miss a video. Thank you very much for watching, guys. You take care.